Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Russ with RWGResearch.com. I have uh, lately been working on a frequency generator based on Stan's original uh, equipment. Um, I did modify it. Um, I want to go through it real quick and kind of let you guys know what it's about. Um, I've also went ahead and um, basically shown, uh, posted this online. Uh, it's over at the forums. I'll put the link in the description. So I want to show you what I did on the breadboard. And then I want to run through the circuit and let you guys know what I'm planning on doing and what it does right now. So, that's what the circuit looks like right now. Um, see if I can get a little closer. Basically, there's a 555 timer right there. Okay. And it goes into uh, what's being controlled with a potentiometer and a set ca uh, capacitor value. If I got a selector switch there for different... Uh, ranges basically uh oh no I don't want to upgrade right now ruining my video anyway and then that goes into a uh, uh, that's a 555 timer and then that goes into an LS, uh, 74 LS 90 which is a decade counter and you're only using uh, 10 of the 12 outputs so that you're basically creating a divide by um, 10 chip basically and you do that three times so you have a selector switch there right there and it allows you to select the range um, so you're taking let's say um, 10 kilohertz divided it by 10 divided by 10 divided by 10 okay and then that output goes through a selector switch depending on what you want here and then that goes out to a, uh, a D flip-flop this is a uh, LS uh, 74 LS 74 all right, and what that does is that divides the frequency in half, but also creates a perfect 50% duty cycle output. Okay, and that goes through an inverter into an output indicator, or that could go to a. Oh, I need to look at something anyway. Yeah, that's fine. That that also goes to an inverter out the signal output. Okay, it goes out down here to an AND gate. All right, and there's two of these frequency generators. Um, all right, and they're isolated all the way until you get down here to an AND gate. And the uh, AND gate, basically, uh, you have to have both of them on for this to work. And what happens is it intermixes the signals, and out comes this nice gated waveform. You have the option here to turn the gating on or off. Okay. Um, you also have the option here to what I call synced. It's it's not true like syncing the gating. Uh, what you're actually doing here with this switch is uh, you can isolate the gating from the circuits, or you can connect them so that whatever range you're in here, uh, you can select which which range you want for the gating. But the the potentiometer that controls the timing will actually control the gating as well. So kind of an interesting function. Uh, you may not use it at all, uh, and if, they, if that's the case, you can just bypass the switch. Don't even worry about it. But I think it's a good option. All right, so you come out here on the output, and um, basically what happens on the output side here is that you got an opto isolator and then a driver circuit for your primary coil. Um, and I've also got an optional MOSFET output driver coil right here uh, circuit basically just replaces this half okay so that's the that's the circuit for you um, I have breadboarded it here it is on the breadboard um, there's my selector switches and uh, my two potentiometers the 555 timers decade counters inverter D flip flop uh, and gate, opto isolator, and my output coil. Um, I can go ahead and turn this on here. I believe it should work. All right, so there you can see those two LEDs. One is for gating. One is for the pulse frequency. Okay, and the other one here is the actual output. So if I change this bottom LED that would be the gating nope that's the resonant frequency on this particular one there's the gating 
But anyway, kind of hard to see, but uh, when you build it for yourself, you'll see. And basically, I'm posting this schematic early because I don't have this the, the circuit board done yet and uh, also the driver circuit. What I want to do, as I've posted here in the schematic, I want to add... Um, Basically, I want to add a uh, MOSFET driver IC, all right, and that will just make this a lot better because I don't think I'm getting full power out of my MOSFET or my transistor. If you guys know how to design this better, I'll be more than glad to let you. Um, I did post this over at the forums. I'll put the link in the description, but in case you want it, there it is. Okay, and uh, I posted the uh, schematic down here at the bottom. It's an attachment, so go ahead and uh, do the research, rwgresearch.com or opensourceenergy.org. You gotta put the dashes in there. That'll get you to where you want to go. So that's just a quick little update. This thing's filthy. I need to get a new uh, camera, but anyway. Uh, this is Russ with rwdresearch.com, showing you what I've been working on, uh, giving away this schematic. Um, I think I have to make a very minor change on this schematic before I post it, even though I've already posted it, because I think my output actually needs to be slightly different for the LED indicator. Because if you have it hooked up to where the switch is, it flashes so quick you can't really tell it's even on. So it's just on the very last divider chip so that it's slow pulsing. And it does has nothing to do with the uh, the uh, switch. That's just an indicator for you that you know it's working all the way through the decade counters. So I'm gonna switch that real quick. Other than that, it's ready to go. Um, again, the driver portion of this circuit needs a little bit of work, and you might test it. It may work great, but I think it's not putting out 100% full power. Basically, if you got 12 volt, it's only putting out um, you know maybe 8 or 10 volt. So something I need to work on driver circuit for the uh, MOSFET, that'll be better, and uh, anything you guys think that uh, could be a gain on this thing, hey, let me know, post it at the forums, and we'll make it work, later guys, see ya.